Now let's take a look at the viewer and the viewer LUT. I'm going to expand the viewer to fill the whole frame again. And here's the viewer LUT pop-up right here. This is where you select which LUT will be used in the viewer. Keep in mind, this correction is applied only to the viewer and the original linear image is untouched. sRGB is the default, which is typical for a workstation monitor. And you get a curve that looks like this. If I turn it off, you can see we're looking at the linear image and it's way too dark. So you can see now what this viewer LUT is doing to brighten the image up. Remember earlier we talked about brighten the image up with a gamma correction so it would look right on a monitor. There it is. You could also choose the Rec. 709 LUT which would give you a rough approximation of a broadcast monitor. If you want to connect a real broadcast monitor to Nuke it will require a special video card. Setting the viewer back to its normal size, we'll take a look at the right nodes. To show you how the right node works, I'm going to clear the properties bin first. So we start with the Marcy 8-bit TIFF image. We do all of our compositing operations in linear space. And now the right node, we're getting ready to write it out to disk. Nuke will decide what kind of color space LUT to use depending on the type of file name that you use. So let's say I'm going to write Marcy out as a TIFF image. So I'll type marcy.tiff. And I'll say save. And look what Nuke has done. It said file type is TIFF. It looked at this extension. It said the file type is TIFF. The data type is 8-bit. So the color space gamma correction it's going to use is the sRGB. And of course you can change that if you wish. If I had said that this was going to be a Cineon image, it would say file type is Cineon again, looking at the extension. It would say the file type is Cineon. And the color space correction LUT it would get is the Cineon. If I said that this was going to be an EXR image, and Nuke would detect that was the file type, and would use a linear LUT. So Nuke looks at the file name extension you apply to your files in order to determine what the output LUT should be. So to summarize Nuke's color management workflow, we'll expand the viewer to fill the frame, the read node backs out all baked-in gamma corrections to restore the image to a true linear light space. Nuke performs all of its computations on the linear light version. The linear version goes to the viewer where it gets a viewer LUT to make it look nice. And then the linear light version goes to the right node which assigns a gamma correction just as it writes it out to disk. Now that we've seen the complete workflow for Nuke's color management, let's take a look at where the LUTs live. Now the term LUT actually is an acronym, L-U-T, which stands for Lookup Table. For those of you that have never worked with a lookup table before, let's take a quick look. We'll select Marcy, go up to the Color tab, and add the Color Lookup node. The Color Lookup node is actually a lookup table. I'll select the master curve and show you how it works. The incoming code values come along this line down here, on this edge. They go up meet the curve and come out on this edge over here. So this is the input code value side and this is the output code value. If I make a change in the curve, like I take 0.5 up here to 0.8, now code value 0.5 will come up to the curve and come out as code value 0.8. Likewise, 0.1 will come out as 0.2 and 0.9 would come out as let's say 0.98. All right, we'll get rid of the color lookup node and take a look at the LUTs in Nuke. Put your cursor in the node graph and hit the S key to bring up the project settings. The project settings have four tabs. We want the LUT tab. And this is where all the LUTs live in Nuke. The first LUT, a linear LUT, does not convert anything to linear. It's a no change LUT. Some people call it an identity LUT. Others call it a unity LUT. So if code value 0.5 comes in, 0.5 goes out, and the image is completely unchanged. Here's the sRGB LUT. In fact, I'm going to add the linear LUT to the display so we can see them both together. Remember the incoming images have a gamma correction that curves like this. The sRGB gamma curve curves in exactly the opposite direction, resulting in the linear image that Nuke uses for all of its compositing. So the sRGB LUT backs out the baked-in gamma. Now, some images might come in as a Rec. 709, we would use this curve. 
The Cineon LUT is used to convert 10-bit log Cineon or DPX images to linear. The Panalog converts Panavision log images to linear. Redlog converts red camera log images to linear. Viperlog converts the Viper log. And Red Space is a LUT provided by the Red Camera Company. The next item of interest on the LUT tab is down here, the default LUT settings. So up here is a list of all the LUTs in Nuke, but down here is where Nuke assigns where they are used. The default monitor LUT affects postage stamps, OpenGL, and non-viewer displays, such as this postage stamp right here. We're going to zoom into the Marcy postage stamp. Right now, it's getting the sRGB LUT, same as the viewer. So the Marcy and the viewer and the Marcy and the postage stamp look the same. But if I go to the monitor LUT and say, for example, set it to linear, you see the postage stamp turned dark. That will put that back to the default sRGB. The rest of these default LUT settings are used by the read and write nodes. So when the read node sees an 8-bit file, such as the Marcy TIFF file, it's going to use the sRGB LUT. Or in a write node, if you're writing out a log file, it's going to use the Cineon LUT. If you read or write a 16-bit file, it's going to get the sRGB LUT unless you set it to something else. Put that back. If you read or write a log file, be that Cineon or DPX, Nuke is going to use the Cineon LUT. And if you read or write float files, Nuke is going to use the linear LUT. And you'll recall, that is the no change LUT, because linear EXR files are already in linear light space. The last thing we want to talk about here on the LUT tab of the project settings is how to create your own custom LUT, which is very easy to do. First, you select the little plus sign which says, I want to add a LUT. Now you give it your name, we'll call it My LUT. Say OK. It's now been added to the list. This is your LUT curve. Select it. Add a control point. Make some changes in it. There. Now I've created my own custom LUT, and every read and write node in Nuke will use it. For example, I'll come down to the 8-bit files, which you recall, that's what this read node is using here, because the Marcy is an 8-bit TIFF. Pop this up, and there is my LUT. Watch Marcy change when I select it. Bang! Okay? So, that's really ugly. So let's put that back to the default sRGB, which is much better than my LUT. And when you save the Nuke script, your new LUT is saved with it. Because of the color space conversions in all read and write nodes in Nuke, there's a special consideration whenever you're working with pre-multiplied CGI images, like this jet here. Okay, we'll zoom in on this guy. I'll show you. He's a four-channel CGI pre-multiplied image. And now we'll take a look at the composite, and I'll open up the read node. The read node has this additional option right here, pre-multiplied. As you know, any color corrections or color space conversions on a pre-multiplied image, it must first be unpremultiplied before the operation, and then remultiplied or pre-multiplied afterwards. With this button, you're telling Nuke, this is a pre-multiplied image in the read node, and it must be unpremultiplied before the color space conversion. So I'm going to turn it on and look at the huge effect it has on the composite. If you fail to enable the pre-multiplied feature, your composite edges will be too dark. We have the same exact setup in the write node. I'll come over to the Images tab, and I'm going to add a write node off to the side here. And right here, color space default pre-multiplied. You would not turn that on for the finished composite. However, if you were rendering out a four-channel pre-multiplied image like this, if this was what you were writing out to disk, you would definitely want to turn that on. If you don't, the rendered image to disk will have dark edges when the next guy gets it at his workstation. So, heads up when working with pre-multiplied CGI with Nuke.